So, hello guys again to the second tutorial of the uh, game. And in this video, I've actually, first of all, what I want to say is I've made the text a bit bigger because someone asked me if I could uh, make the text a bit bigger because it was hard to read. So, I've just made it into size 18 and I put the window on full screen. So, it should help, you know. So, I'm hoping this is going to help. So, yeah, in this tutorial, what I wanted to cover was creating a FPS counter and a uh, just drawing a few a basic terrain for the ground so yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new function which is going to be called f uh, count fps and this is just going to count our fps but to do this we need to actually import a couple of things uh, is it a couple of things no it's just one thing to import so we need to import time just add that to your import array listing or whatever <laughs> And then just come down a bit, and just at the top somewhere, just define count FPS. You don't have to call it that, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it count FPS, just so it's easy to remember. So I'm gonna, we're going to make a few global variables. So we want a global current second, we're going to call it csec for short. We want a global current frame, and then we want a global FPS, and then delta time. Now I'm going to explain these things, so this variable is going to be an integer of the current second that the uh, that it's at right now. This is an integer of the current frame that it's rendered in the second. The FPS, well obviously that's obvious, we know what it is, that's the FPS, the integer of the FPS. And delta time, this is a flow of something that I'm going to explain later on, but for now we don't actually have to worry about what this is at the minute, so you know what? I'm just going to delete that, because we'll come to that later. Instead of confusing you now, we'll confuse you with that later. <laughs> so, I'm going to say if csec equals time, so we're going to do time dot string f time, and then percent second. And what time dot string f time does, if you don't know, is it's just, it gets the current time, and then if you put percent s, it'll get the current second that your computer's running at. Or you could do something like current uh, percent h or something, which will get the current hour. But we need to get percent s because we don't want frames per hour. We want frames per second. So then we just do c frame uh, plus equals one. And then we want to do oh, but before I've just realised what we need to do is actually create some default values for these. So just come up to the top and just set c sec equals. Uh, zero c frame equals zero and fps equals zero so if as long as the current second equals the time of day dot second uh, which it doesn't to start off with as you can see we're going to increase the frame but as soon as the second flips over to the next second that's when we need to um calculate what the eight frames per second was in that second so we do else and we do FPS equals C frame, which is whatever this got up to. And then we just set C frame back to zero again. So C frame equals zero. And then we just want to go and put uh, C sec to equal time dot string F time percent S, which I'm just going to copy and paste that. So that should count our FPS. So there's only one way we can actually test that, and I'm going to go into that soon. Because first of all, what we need to do is we need to actually render some text to the screen. So as you can see, I'm just going to make a little comment here saying uh, render graphics. So let's bring this down a bit, a bit more space here. And I'm going to just come under render graphics, and so everything in between render graphics and the display update is what it's going to render because what this what i forgot to go into in the last video was what actually does display update do well if you don't know if you don't know about pi game then this basically this draws everything that you've told it to draw to the window basically i'll just update the display with all the drawn graphics on it so the next part is to obviously um we want to actually draw some uh, graphics, but I'm actually going to show you how to do something. So, what we want to do, we want to get 
say we want to draw it in a certain colour, but we don't know what colour to actually draw it in. Well, instead of having to make an RGB value every time, what you can do is you can come and into my link in the description, you can download my module, my colour module, and it contains, I think it's about, I think it's a, nearly a hundred colours, it's a, it's a lot of colours it contains, and I've basically got them all from Visual Studio and just put them back into this module, so I'll put a link to this file in the description, so if I can find it, I'll give it you. Um, it's probably in my scripts folder somewhere, here we go, ultra colour, let me just copy and paste that. I'll put a link to this file in the description so you can download it, so all I'm going to do is just copy and paste that into here, and I'm going to make a new folder in our directory and just call it scripts. I'm just going to paste, or drag that into there. If you actually open up this Python file, you'll see it has a ton of different values. You've got all these colours that you can use in your application. There's loads of them. It took me like an hour to write out, and there's even a random generator if you want that, and a transparency colour generator as well. So yeah, feel free to use that. I'll put a link in the description. and. What I'm going to do at the top in the scripts then is import that as well. So I'm going to do from scripts dot ultra color import all. That's just going to import all the classes and everything from the ultra color file that I just added to my scripts folder. So scripts dot ultra color uh, scripts fo scripts folder slash ultra color basically. And what we can do instead of doing that as zero zero zero, we can now do color dot black and that is black so for any color you can just do color dot and then whatever color you want it so anyway what I want to do now is actually we've got we can get the FPS now hopefully if it works we can get the FPS so the next part is to actually show the FPS count on the on the screen so all I'm gonna do here is just create a new font up here and if you don't know how to create a font in Python just give it a variable name and just set it equal to a pygame.font.font. .font. So we'll just we'll call this um, FPS font and we'll set that equal to pygame.font.font. .font. And a font file, you're gonna have to get the file from Windows Windows Fonts folder. So I'm just gonna do C colon slash slash Windows slash slash font slash slash donna.ttf, that's a decent font and you can just give it a size, so I'm just going to do size 20 then what I want to do is make a method that actually renders in fact no, we don't even need to do that, we can just simply render it to the text, so to the screen, so what I'm going to do is just um, say no, no I'll make a method actually just thought on, so if I just do this uh, define show fps show FPS and underneath here I'm gonna do um, we'll say um, FPS underscore overlay equals FPS font dot render um, and then what we'll render is we'll render the FPS so we need to convert that into a string for FPS FP FPS and then the next argument is anti-aliasing, so we'll put that to true because we want it to look smooth. And the next argument is the colour of the text. So for that, I'm just going to do colour dot golden rod, which you can get colour dot golden rod. That's in my module. So uh, and then we need to actually blit this to the screen. So all I'm going to do is say window dot blit. FPS overlay and inside our graphics drawing loop we can just do show FPS and that should show it so let's test it out and see if it's gonna work I don't know oh no, it looks like we have an error uh, ah that's why we have an error I'm an idiot I forgot to take the position in the blit so the next part of blit is the position where you want to render it to so we'll just do zero zero top left of the screen and there we go, we have our FPS. But as you notice, it's only zero at the minute, and that's because we need to go into our game loop again and keep getting the FPS or counting the FPS. So we just need to call that function. So what I'm going to do is say, just before render graphics, we'll do logic. 
to logic. Let me just make this capitals actually. Uh, this is much better. And then I'm going to just say count FPS. Run that now. And oh, we have another error. Oh, oh. Time dot time dot string of time. Okay, we've made an error here. We. How did I not see that before? So, we want to go there and. Yay, there we go. And as you can see, we're getting 1462. Oh my god, we're getting a high FPS. So, that should also be using your graphics card if it's harder accelerated the way we told it to. Um, and that is a basic FPS counter. So, as you can see, it's just constantly just. It's, just, it's absolutely rapidly moving through this window right now. At, 1400 odd fps that's brilliant so that wasn't too difficult just to get to show the fps um also if you feel a bit like confused about what we've just done uh, feel free to comment down below in the description and i'll do my best to help you out with understanding it so and don't worry and don't quit now because i remember when i was learning this i was always getting like so annoyed that i didn't understand how things worked but it i learned it in the end so if I now what I want to do now actually is like render a simple terrain that I'll render like a very simple one like a little grid or something just to give us the idea of how things are working. So what I'm going to come down here is in the graphics loop just before we show the FPS because we want the FPS to show up above everything else on the window. So what I'm going to do is render before we show the F render the FPS. I want to make a uh, Render simple grid, uh, terrain grid, terrain grid, and then so all we need to do is we need to go four x in range zero, and then we need to do the maximum size of what you want your window to be. So first of all, above here we need to make a default variable and call it tile size. So I'm going to call that tile size. I want for this, I'm just going to set it equal to 32 pixels. So that'll be 32 by 32 tiles in the grid. So I'm going to do, um, if I just get my calculator here, and let's say let's say we want the uh, the map to have like uh, 16 ti uh, 20 tiles across and 10 tiles down. So all we do, oh no, 20 tiles across, 15 tiles down. So we do 20 times 32 equals, so we want to do 640 here, so 640, and I want to increase it each time by tile size, so that's the step, so that's the maximum for the x, and that's the step, so, and then we want to do 4y in range 0, and then we need to get that again, so if I do 15 times 32 equals 480, so, uh, 480 and then increase the tile size. Now, what I want to do is draw a square. So, all we do is pi game dot draw dot rect. Um, we'll draw that at uh, we'll draw that onto our window and then in color dot white. I'm going to do it for now and then. We'll draw that at position x, y, tile, size, tile, size. So tile size, width, tile size, height. And then what we are going to have to do next is set the width of the line. So I'm just going to do it one pixel. And let's run this and see. And there we go, we have a simple little grid that's getting drawn. As you can see, these lines might look a bit like thick or like a bit weird. So what we want to do is, because of the way that Pi Games loops actually work, we need to actually just do minus one in tile size, just because it's always one more than what it says in a loop. Just the way that the loops work. Oh wait, no, that's not correct. I told you something incorrect there. That's that's not right. I think what is it now? I've forgotten. Um. I think it's minus one here, I think, I believe. We just... No, 
it isn't. What is it? Uh, one minute. I'll remember this. Just a, oh, is it plus one? It's plus, no, it's plus one, isn't it? That's what it is. Yeah, there we go. Now it looks pro properly done, though. As you can see, all the lines are just one by one wide, which is correct. It's just the way the loops work. If you start it on zero, it's always going to start at one. It's weird. Or is it the other way around? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, if you do... As you can see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. Yep, so we've got all 20 across, and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 down. So we've got 20 across, 15 down, which is as we should have expected. So that's a simple little start up to our game, and obviously now we can start adding textures and drawing a proper terrain and a proper map, and having it like fill out correctly as we want it to, so yeah. Anyway guys, I'm going to end this tutorial here right now, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial hopefully. Goodbye. Please remember to subscribe, comment and like if you have any issues or if you just like the video.